I would like to share with you some observations that led me to the assumption that after Occupy and after the banking crisis in 2008, there are radical changes in first what kind of public space is getting important to be activated by artists, curators and activists, and second also which goals should be achieved. With this in mind, let's have a look at the street and other venues for public participation. This is Stockholm city. Um, streets and squares are often referred to as the main arena for public protest, intervention and participation. In a way, for many, the street still symbolizes the essential idea of public space, even when privatization has changed most parts of urban space into socially segregated areas for consumption and under surveillance. But if we are looking back to 1968, the streets actually still kept their promise of being a powerful place for participation and resistance. Um, the May protests in the streets of Paris, where millions of students were joined by workers on strike, radically changed society in France, liberating it from old patriarchal structures. Atelier Populaire, which was a group of art students and professors, they made these amazing posters to support the struggles. <clears throat> More recently, the streets have been activated for various protests worldwide against the devastating effects of finance capitalism, the increasing gap between rich and poor, the cutbacks of the public sector, and the environmental degradation, such as the Wall Street climate protest last September, where our polar bear here was spotted, who is actually an advocate from the Center for Biological Diversity. Occupy as a mass movement was certainly um, the biggest of these protests and also the one which drew the most attention. But we also have to ask ourselves the question, what impact did these protests have on the actual political reality? Well, the protests can be described as successful in two ways. As publicity, even our polar bear got famous, to produce images geared towards the media and create a public awareness of global problems caused by neoliberalism and to show that you are many. Tens of thousands of people were protesting here in Rio against the government. But it's not only that protests are increasingly controlled by the police who quickly turn violent against protesters and often also act outside the law. Even our polar bear got arrested. Where is our right to protest? But also that protesters in the streets, including that protests in the streets, including the Occupy movement, didn't really affect the neoliberal reality. In order to find out what could be done about this, let's have a look at the general situation today. I would describe the general situation today accordingly as post-Occupy and also post-banking crisis. Also, I'm aware that they are still Occupy events going on and that um, countries are suffering um, under austerity programs. But finance capitalism is still ruling the world. Occupy was claiming 99% as being against the existing neoliberal system, which sounds like a clear case. And also the banking crisis in 2008 could have forced its implosion by accident, so to speak. But it didn't happen. Both Occupy and the banking crisis didn't lead to any actual changes. In fact, they only manifested the hegemony of neoliberalism. Nevertheless, both events, well, Occupy wasn't really an event, but succeeded in working against the normalization of the neoliberal imperative ideology, which Mark Fisher described as capitalist realism. This was shattered, this capitalist realism was shattered due to the success of Occupy as um, mass psychotherapy, it's a term that um, Jonas Stahl coined, and also because in the banking crisis, even ordinary Joe lost on the stock market. It became clear that the stock market serves as an instrument to make people feel compliant with the neoliberal system. The logic of small and cheap shares is to make ordinary people feel as if they were benefiting from the system, getting a part of the big cake, not realizing that it's actually only peanuts. So, protests have been done, the claims are on the table, now we have to enter the next level. 
I see two approaches. One is following the spirit of Occupy, stay away from power, find local alternatives. It's about withdrawing, commons is one example. Theoretical backup we find in um, Negri and Hart or Bifo. The other one is more of an operational approach, confronting power, creating new institutions and infrastructures that are able to operate locally and globally. We find theoretical backup in um, Chantal Mouffe or Mark Fisher. Of course, there is not only black and white, also several shades of gray. For example, can it be very important to withdraw? Withdrawal is important in any kind of political process or artistic protest. And then wait for the right moment before you go to where the power is. Since, to my mind, public institutions are in crisis in different countries to different extents, I see a need to reoccupy them as facilitators of public interest. I think Andrea Phillips was also referring to that in her speech before. Therefore, let's have a closer link to this, a closer look at the second approach and see where it leads us to. Many artists and curators are working with, for example, educational infrastructures. Others create new parliamentary structures, such as summits, or they work with parties or unions, and so on. Some are speaking here at the summit. Let's have a closer look at approaches dealing with schools and educational structures. Since the whole educational system is in a crisis, I think it's a good example. Ahmed Ögut, he is speaking tomorrow, so I only mention his project very briefly, but since it's such an important example. He founded the Silent University. Here we see um, an installation of his um, library at Tensta Konstal which is organized as a knowledge exchange platform by and for refugees and asylum seekers. And here is a course at the home of one of the participants. It's significant that Ugut mentioned that his practice as an artist switched to organizational activities, which means providing space and infrastructure. Um, Another example is um, the Open School East in Hackney in London. That's the building, it's an old library, where curators and producers Anna Collin, Lawrence Taylor and Sam Thorne are setting up a new institution, new art institution, new art education. That's um, a course at the Performing Arts Forum. And that's one with Mark Fisher at the Container Port in Felix Stowe. This institution is free of tuition, very important in the UK, and not only offers a counter model to existing institutionalized art education, but also targeting the larger questions of political problems, migration politics, managerialism and bureaucracy, class distinction and inequality, also fostered by the Bologna process. Instead, they offer free and open access to education. These are functional models which on a small scale and often local scale explore what is to be done on a larger scale and on a transnational level. Today we are definitely in a time of transition, you can also call it crisis, but I prefer transition in that case, that will end up with the replacement of neoliberal finance capitalism through another more equitable and libertarian system. Maybe that's what um, Etienne Baliba has in mind with his Ega Liberté. Already in 1998, Immanuel Wallerstein wrote in his fantastic essay, Utopistics, that changes which have to include revolts and violence will occur until they bring forth a new system. It starts with a violin and it ends with Le Leviathan? Okay. <laughs> so let's stay with the, with the violin. I'm finished quite soon. Um, so, um, Changes will occur until they bring forth a new system, which Wallerstein sees installed in 2050. So hang on for another 36 years and join the revolts. Thank you very much. I'm curious, after this presentation, what do you think about the streets? Mm -hmm. What do you think about the future of, of streets as, as a place for democratic intervention? 
that's a very good question because um, in my talk I was um, mainly referring to democratic, mainly Western societies. But of course in societies um, under dictatorship, um, under surveillance, there are very different possibilities and needs still to occupy the streets. And I think Joanna Vasha will probably talk about that when she's referring to Manifesta in St. Petersburg, mm -hmm. and also like um, the uprisings in Cairo. So that's, that's all very different circumstances, and very often Occupy and Cairo are discussed in the same way, and I think it's, we have to stay away from that because there are so many, or so different circumstances and contexts, we have to see it in a different way. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>